All right, you're good. Yeah. Thank you. Hey! Hello? What do you think of my mouse pad? Be honest. Do you like it? Terrible? What the heck? W mouse pad? Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's a USDA Animal Care, Animal Welfare Act, and Animal Welfare Regulations book. I've read that book before. Really? I don't believe you. Um, a little short, a uh, little short-ish intro, um, because we got a little, we got raid, we got raided, um, and I'm trying to keep them around. Is anybody still here from the raid? Say hi. <coughs> no. Hi. Oh my gosh. Hi. I know some of y'all weren't here from the raid, but I s a lot. Whoa, that's a lot of you. Hello. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Quest, everybody. Um, holy first time chatters. Animal Quest uh, is, guys, you're going to learn, okay? Get out your freaking notebooks. It's school time. You remember that? A bunch of old farts from Nick's stream. You remember that? Time to take notes. It's time to learn. It's not going to be that dense. Don't worry. But we are doing Animal Quest today. It's a, it's a spotlight um, for each of the ambassadors that we have at Alveus. I hate school. Oh, it's not school. I take it back. You're not going to learn. It's going to be really fun and fresh. <laughs> um, and I, I do a spotlight on each species that we have uh, at Alveus. Um, and teach you about teach you about their natural history and teach you about them and they come out here and they do a little taste test and you get to meet them um, and they become famous. So today our two chinchillas they become really famous. Taste test? Yeah, they taste test. I don't eat them. They taste test things and then they tell us what they like the most. That's how it works. Sounds like school TBH. What? What? If, when was the last time you saw a taste test in school? Huh? Huh? I'm not eating chinchillas. No, you're going to learn about chinchillas. Someone said audio is terrible, and you're lying. You're lying. I know you're lying, because I can hear it in my own ear. It sounds fine. Maya is stuffy. You don't have to point it out. Why would you say that to your teacher? This is getting very confusing. <laughs> Today, smile. Um... Oh, he means your voice. Okay, great. I love it here. I'm really glad that all of you guys are here. This is really exciting for me. Um, so, I usually skip this part and get right into the education. Me too, dude. Me too. I love Nick's chat. I love Nick's chat. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. So, like I said, uh, we've done Animal Quest on a bunch of them, um, a bunch of the animals we have here. We've done an emu Animal Quest. We've done a falcon. We've done um, chickens, we've done snakes, we've done our uh, bullfrog, um, and today we are talking about the chinchillas. Each of the ambassadors that we have at Alveus has a purpose for education. Um, the donkeys for traditional medicine, the emu for the exotic meat trade, the frog for chytrid fungus, and the pet trade, the parrots for the pet trade, um, and habitat loss. The chinchillas for a few things, primarily the fur trade, the pet trade, and uh, animal use in research studies. We're going to talk about all those things today. Um, one of the big things that I say on normal keeping streams about chinchillas is it takes between 120 to 200 to make a single fur coat. Um, and it has wiped out chinchillas in the, in the wild. This is the second animal quest that we've done with an endangered species. Um, the African greys, we have Mia here at Alveus. African greys are endangered. Um, and chinchillas are endangered. There are about... Uh, 5,300 left recorded in the wild, um, and today we're going to talk about why. Cool? Who's excited? Say I, smile, if you're excited. Wow, that's not a lot? No, it's not. No, it's not. I, smile. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get into it. Are you ready? Let's see how good I did avoiding my cam in the lower left corner. Usually I do really bad and I end up blocking the, the work that I did. 
welcome to my presentation. <laughs> Ew. Sorry. Don't think of it like a presentation. It's fine. And don't call it a PowerPoint because it's not a PowerPoint. This is Prezi, okay? And I work very hard on these, and I hope that you like them, okay? Before we talk about chinchillas and their plight and the species, we're going to talk about our two chinchillas because we have two um, Snork and Moomin. But where did they come from? You're going to meet them in a second. But Max, people clap, made this video about their stories. Yay! <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> Moomin is a chinchilla, as you can see. This was Ella's chinchilla prior to coming to Alveas to be an ambassador here. And then we recently got him a companion from California. The snork we got from California, they thought when we got her that she was pregnant. We took her and Moomin both to the vet, and the vet said they didn't think that she was pregnant. The reason that chinchillas are a really important ambassador is because they're a great segue to talk about the fur trade and how the fur trade has impacted so many species beyond the chinchilla species. And chinchillas are endangered in the wild because of the fur trade. Look at him go. I just got a text from Kayla, who's a keeper here, and she said they're crated and match. That's not what Kayla says, but they're ready. The end, they're so cute. Yay, Max, good video. Aw, it's nice. Okay, so that's where Snork and Moomin came from. Moomin was Ella's pet. Um, and she donated him to Alvaez to be an ambassador because Ella lives here. Ella is one of our keepers. And then, um, Snork, we got overstock from a zoo in California that I used to work at in college. Um, and then we put them together and now they're best friends and they live together. So that's, that's who our two chinchillas are. Natural history. <laughs> this picture's so far. Okay, <laughs> wild, ch here's, let me make a very clear distinction right now. Um, there is a difference between domestic chinchillas, the chinchillas that you know, and the ones that exist in the wild, okay? They've come a long way from what they used to look like, <laughs> okay? So, uh, in the wild, uh, chinchillas live in the Andes. They live in, um, they live in the Andes. They live in, pr actually, they're extinct in Peru now. They did live in Peru, but now they're extinct in Peru. Um, they live in Chile. At altitudes of 9,800 to over 16,000 feet. Are you kidding me? Um, crazy, crazy conditions. They like living in rock crevices and burrows. Um, and they're foragers, so they like eating uh, grasses and seeds. And sometimes even insects, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, they're nocturnal or crepuscular. Does anybody know what crepuscular means? If you know what it means, you get a QTC cookie. <laughs> oh my God, my voice is terrible. You guys are right. Thank you for the five. Dusk and dawn, wow, there's a lot of people, yeah, active during dusk and dawn, yeah, so they're either nocturnal or they're crepuscular, so they like nighttime, um, and they're super, super social, so the reason that we have two is because uh, they're, they like living in colonies in the wild, colonies of up to 100 individuals, so actual class, I don't know how to make it feel like less of a class, man, I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys, you know what I mean, like, how do I make it less of a class, what do you want me to do, what do you, what do you want from me, I'm sorry, I'm trying my best, but look at this picture. Wild versus domestic chinchilla. This wild chinchilla is one from uh, living in Machu Picchu. Um, and that is a short-tailed chinchilla in the wild. Which just like, if I saw it, if I saw that animal in the wild, I wouldn't even be like, oh, a chinchilla. Would any of you think that's a chinchilla? Am I stupid? I saw these, I compared these two pictures and I laughed at it for minutes straight on my own. I think it's so funny. Um, but yeah, and then this is our, this is our domestic chinchilla. Um, a long-tailed chinchilla is, is what we have currently. Um, we're going to bring them in. Oh, my gosh. Kayla's. Kayla, you're incredible. I literally was just about to text you. I was like, we're going to bring them in. Um, chat, are you ready to meet them? Because we're about to do a taste test. And we're about to, we're about to meet the little man. We have Moomin 
in here today. Um, Moomin is the male chinchilla that was Ella's originally. We're going to see if they do a taste test, if, they, if he wants to eat anything on the table. Uh, but he might not. He might just, he might just run away. <laughs> do, he might just jump off the table. Do you see him, Moomin? There he is. He's rabbit. He's going to bite me. He's not going to bite me. But he does want out of the cage really bad. Um, here, I'll show you. Our chinchillas are crate trained. Um, so they have learned to voluntarily go into the crate. Kayla and Ella have crate trained them. Um, they're clicker trained, so they know when they go in the crate, they get a treat. Um, and they get, they get positive reinforcement for that. So... Kayla said she got a little carried away with the taste test, but I disagree. It looks like a little charcuterie. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, chat. Here is the taste testing board. We have parsley, dried parsley, a Timothy treat, a raisin. That is a rose hip. A rose hip. Um, a Cheerio, a half a Cheerio, a raisin, a tiny raisin piece, and some veggie treats, which is like a pea or something, dried, dehydrated veggies. That is a taste test. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure, and now we will release him. I, chat, he may not, I don't know what he's going to do, okay? He doesn't come in here very often, but, oh my god. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Moomin, Moomin, come here. Look, there's tweets. <laughs> Chat, they're fast. Oh, down. He jumped off the table. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be around, you know, and that's okay. <laughs> He's just running around. And Snork, Snork is the female chinchilla. Who we'll see if she participates in the taste test. Maybe she doesn't. I don't know. Hi, would you like to eat treats? She ate the raisin <laughs> already. <laughs> and then she ran away. <laughs> Do you want more treats? <laughs> okay, thank you. Do you want more? You can have anything from here. Um, she's eating the veggie treats now. Oh, she also ate the Cheerio. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> she ate them at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry we didn't do a poll. They're a little fast. Uh, so we didn't get there. If you want to do a poll for the last three, we have a Timothy treat, parsley, and a rose hip. Oh my gosh. So they are about twice the size of their wild counterparts. And again, they just look very different. The domestic chinchillas, they wouldn't make it out there, you know? They're just not quite as rugged. Female confirmed eating hot chip. They move it. Someone said they move at 20 FPS. You're really correct. I mean, they, like, move in frames. Like, oh, my God, she's running. You have more treats you want, one of these? The FPS got increased. Do you want these? How come they got so big? Thank you for raising your hand to ask a question, people. Hey, um, it's <laughs> <coughs> just selective breeding. People just wanted bigger, um, bigger chinchillas as pets, I imagine. And that's why. Do you want any of these? Rose hip Timothy treat. Let me try to, let's see if I can show you her. She's facing me, but I do want to show you her little hands. And I think I might be able to show you if space camera lands. Come here, lady. Space, can you cameraman and zoom in on her? Oh. She's, she's, oh my god. Here, here, strike. Over here, do you want this? You can, you have to, oh, do you want to come here? Do 
Fiona. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> like I said, guys, they get positive reinforcement with the crate. The crate is a good thing, and now they have a castle. <laughs> Do you like the castle? Do you want a treat in your castle? Where did he go? I don't know if she's going to be in, um, into that enough. A castle. Amazing. I was trying to get something that's big enough where she can show them her hands. Like, she has to hold it. So what Kayla's putting out right now is a little, it's like an enrichment feeder. It's called a snuffle mat. Um, so you can put all their pellets, such as these little compressed Timothy pellets in there, and then she can go find them in there. We'll see if she does that. Hello, ma'am. Show them your hands, Snork. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, hi. <laughs> there are her hands. Look how she holds things. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> you can put it right there. That's fine. If she she gets into it, we'll just pause the presentation. But I don't imagine she will. All right. Well, chat, we'll see how long Snork hangs out up here. If she gets off, she gets off. And we just pray that Moomin doesn't chew on any essential cords while I'm live. Because, um, you know, if I go offline, it's because Moomin's running around the studio and they chew cords. So... We'll see. Anyway, this is Snork. All right, let's talk a little bit more about about, <laughs> about them. <laughs> Wait, a little. Chat, I also want to say this is the Chinchillas. They've never been a part of a program, like an educational program. They've never come out for like a collab or anything. They spent a little bit of time in the studio when we had to remodel some stuff in the nut house, but like this is all very new. So she's just uh, she's just exploring. But anyway, oh, Space, you got to move the camera because <laughs> I don't think you can uncrop my head like that. I think you have to move the actual camera. Unless you can make it taller. Then. No. Oh, he's a genius. That should be fine. Okay. Chat, we're going to do a lot of, we're going to do a lot of this because, sorry, Space, because she's doing things. Okay. Sometimes she'll come in the camera. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Oh my god, there she is. Hello. Oh. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> Alright, so um there's the there's the kind of taste test. You kinda got a feel. She went for the raisin first, they like raisins, a lot of sugar. Um and then space, that's perfect, thank you. Uh and she ate the Cheerio and she ate the veggie treats. Is this a Prezi? Yes, it is. Do you have a problem with it? Let's talk about chinchillas and humans, okay? Because there's actually a lot of history there. Um, it is thought that all of the domestic chillas in the chinchillas in the U.S. Um, were originated from a man named Matthias F. Chapman. He got special permission in the 1920s from the Chilean government to bring over 11 chinchillas, wild chinchillas, okay? And he, like, acclimated them um, to the elevation change. He brought natural food with them um, so that they could acclimate in the U.S. And... They think that all domestic chinchillas in the U.S. have originated from that 11, which is wild to think about. Uh, like I said, domestic chinchillas almost twice the size of their wild relatives, um, and chinchillas are still increasing in popularity as pets in the U.S. Um, this is a heavy slide. Don't try to, you don't have to worry about reading it. I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, there is a lot of history behind chinchillas and humans and, and um, domestic chinchillas. There was Molta Chichilla Ranch. Oh no, is she on the ground? <laughs> She's on the ground. <laughs> um, Molta Chichilla Ranch um, <coughs> was a supplier 
and they got they had 750 chinchillas and they got complaints um and they got sightings by the usda since 2013 um they had a bunch of of uh animal welfare violations since 2013 um they did not get brought to court until july of 2021 um and that ranch was doing breeding for pets for the fur trade, but mostly uh, for chinchillas as research animals. Um, they used chinchillas in research studies about hearing loss, uh, about uh, and they just exposed them to hazardous levels of noise to see like what the threshold is for hearing loss, which is something that I learned um, doing this presentation. And so a lot of those chinchillas were supplied for that reason. But the chinchillas at this ranch um, were under such horrible welfare conditions that the University of Oklahoma dropped them as a supplier in 2018. Um, because they said the animals were not of the quality needed for our research. So they weren't even in good enough shape to be a part of a research project where they were just like, a lot of them ended up dying. <laughs> so um, really, really terrible conditions at this ranch. Um, and there's a video here. I will say this is a video created by PETA. I'm not a PETA fan. Um, but it does have a lot of footage in it. Um, about the conditions because they did like an undercover operation in there. Um, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, but also note, this is the first federal animal welfare case involving research animals in six years in 2021. So it just never happens. Um, and this is a facility that had complaints since 2013. And it took them that long. So this happens all the time, everywhere. <clears throat> and here's some footage from the ranch. Moments here. Moomin has joined us. Um, anyway, yeah, I know that was a lot of crazy footage, but I just wanted to highlight um, a lot of animals in research facilities um, are under pretty, pretty awful welfare conditions, um, and there's a pretty famous example there of chinchillas in a really big, like, landmark court case for uh, the Animal Welfare Act. So... Um, that was a Molten Chinchilla Ranch, uh, and Moomin is up here to visit us again, which is a little bit happier. Um. Snork is on the ground still. Anyway, Moomin will be here. So, um, <coughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is Chinchillas and Humans, like a little bit of history about them, uh, but there's also, what, why isn't it? Oh, I guess I already did it. Weird. Weird. Okay. Sorry. I thought I was missing a section. Um, okay. So then chinchillas and humans, another big one. Like, I've seen a whole fur coat of chinchillas. Yeah. Okay. So like I said at the very beginning of the stream. Oh, Moomin changed the slide. Um, at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, it takes 120 to 200 chinchillas to make a single fur coat. So when fur was really, really popular... Um, they were wiping chinchillas out in the wild, just hunting them to extinction. They hunted them to extinction in Peru. There are no longer any chinchillas in Peru. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about their conservation later, uh, but they're now endangered because of that fur trade. Um, and currently, it's estimated that about 95% of fur for fashion comes from fur farms, which you would argue or you'd think is better um, than taking them out of the wild and wiping out those populations. But... Uh, there's lots of problems that come with fur farms. We're going to talk about those in just a second. 
Um, but one of the reasons that chinchilla fur is so popular um, for coats is because they're insanely soft. I don't know if you guys have ever touched these guys, but they're super soft because they have 50 hairs per follicle. You look at like a hair follicle, we have one hair per follicle, you know? They have 50. So it's super, super dense, dense enough to where they naturally um, avoid getting parasites because para it's too dense for parasites to get to their skin um, because of how many <laughs> hairs they have per follicle. follicle. He's on my keyboard. Um, oh God, he started, I don't know what that is. It says start typing, escape. Oh, never mind. Um, and 20,000 hairs per square inch of chinchilla. That is a lot of hairs. Um, I clicked off my my presentation because is that thank you. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Um sorry. Um, fur applications. So a lot of people think when they think fur coats, they just think of like the full on, like, chinchillas on the floor, the full on, like, uh, you know, neck to, to ankle fur coat, like really fancy. Uh, but fur comes in lots of different applications. This is what I think of when I think of fur. Uh, but there's also things like this. Fur is super, super popular in China for accessories and gifts and um, toys and things like that. Uh, fur trim is one of the biggest uh, problems with fur. Nowadays, a lot of people buy coats and they don't realize that the fur trim is real fur. So trim like that. Um, a lot of makeup brushes are made out of real animal fur. Um, accessories like this, wallets, things like that. So there's, there's a lot more than just, just coats. But 95% of this fur comes from fur farms. What's the problem with fur farms? This video was obtained by the Association for the Protection of Fur-Bearing Animals and depicts animals suffering on fur farms across Canada. What you're seeing are glimpses into the industry and what are the These norms. Are
Fur is a luxury item that nobody needs. We can stop fur farms by choosing not to wear fur. To take action on the fur issue, learn as much as you can about this industry, and you can go to websites like makefurhistory.com. Learn more about your state and provincial laws, and get involved with politicians and voice your opposition to this type of cruelty. We can win this. We can stop the suffering of millions of animals across North America by simply saying no to fur and making fur history. We can stand together. We can protect these animals. We can make fur history. <clears throat> People riot no more fur. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that was really alarming in that video um, that I said we would talk about is one of the worst parts to, m well, I don't know if it's one of the worst. No, it is. It's one of the worst parts um, about fur farms is um, the euthanasia practices. Um, and that's because they don't want to damage or affect the pelts at all, right? Because the whole point um, is the pelt. It's similar to, I might, I'm going to try not to go into an anecdote here, but uh, the donkeys on the Animal Quest I talked about, um, how they, they boil donkey skin to get a gelatin for, for the traditional medicine trade, right? So it doesn't really matter what condition that donkey is in health-wise. As long as they get all of the skin, then they're good to go. So <laughs> there's a chinchilla on my foot. Um, so for fur farms, all they care about is getting a really clean, full pelt. Um, so they're either gassing these animals or um, electrocuting them. And the way that the electrocution works is by hanging them upside down and electrocuting them anally, um, which is not something that I've ever heard of, um, but it's a way to kill that animal without um, damaging the pelt. So, and that's a legal practice throughout North America, like they said in that video. Um, animals in the fur trade are not protected by the two federal animal welfare laws um, that we have, so uh, that's, that's something that's allowed, uh, which makes it, I don't like to make super black and white statements, but it makes it uh, objectively a pretty cruel industry. Um, so, yeah, good, good stuff to know um, about the fur trade. Um, oh, no. Set. So then, other things about the fur trade. Um, if that doesn't bother you enough, how does the fur trade affect us, right? Um, COVID, um, fantastic example of how the wildlife, wildlife trade has affected us. There are lots of other diseases um, that have shown us how the wildlife trade affected, has affected us, SARS, um, uh, avian flu, um, swine flu, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Zoonotic disease is a disease that's transmissible from vertebrate animals to humans. So from animals to humans, uh, U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention states that up to 75% of emerging affected, um, infectious diseases are zoonotic in origin. Um, so they come from animals. Man, it's so hard for me to talk right now. I'm sorry. Um, this is a crazy story that I don't know if you guys know about. Um, COVID. In 2020, in Europe, affected uh, minks got infected with COVID um, in Europe in 2020. And as an effort to eradicate the disease, they euthanized 17 million far fur farm-raised minks. 17 million of them. Um, and then mass put them in a mass grave, they did a mass burial, burial for 17 million COVID-infected minks in Denmark. Um, and... It was an attempt to keep COVID from spreading because they knew that it was a zoonotic disease, but uh, it continued to spread and it infected 10 um, different fur farms for minks across 10 other countries. Um, and so that is the strongest, or that, that's a leading theory of, of how COVID um, was, was uh, spread to humans and how COVID became a global pandemic. Um, that being said, despite, despite that, despite COVID, despite... Um, 17 million animals being euthanized. Um, we still consume a lot of fur from fur farms, a lot of products from fur farms. China still consumes over 50 million skins annually. Um, when I say 50 million skins, that is 50 million individuals, right, annually. Um, so kind of crazy. Um, I have some pictures here. I should have put a spoiler over the top picture. I'm sorry. That is the mass, the mass grave in Denmark um, of, the, of the minks that were euthanized. Um, they realized that it was an illegal burial, and so they had to dig them up. And so this is a photo from, from when it was dug up. Uh, and then a picture below that, I'm covering it a little bit, is uh, minks in fur farms, which you saw 
in that video that I just showed, chinchilla on my foot, chinchilla on my foot, um, they're running around on the floor. <laughs> but uh, I want to show you this video. Um, space, we're going to put this video in uh, plus, uh, or like 0.25 speed um, because it's a longer one. But I think it's a really interesting way. Or it, it's a good video on, on showing how um, zoonotic disease spreads uh, and why and how the wildlife trade is such a big part of it. 20. Everyday life seemed relatively We're gonna put normal. It a little faster. Then, COVID 19, a new deadly coronavirus, spread across the globe and changed our lives. COVID 19 can be characterized as a pandemic. As of June 2021, at least 177 million people have been infected, and more so than 3.8 million have died, though these are thought to be low estimates and numbers continue to rise. Lockdowns and other restrictions imposed in response to the pandemic also triggered the deepest global economic recession in a century, with at least 131 million people pushed into poverty. Still, the pandemic rages on as new, more contagious strains evolve. But this coronavirus is just the newest zoonotic disease to jump from animals to infect people. Kind of a sick intro, wicked. Since the mid-20th century, new and deadly human diseases have emerged at an alarming and escalating rate. About two-thirds are zoonotic, including AIDS, Ebola, swine flu, bird flu, Lyme disease, SARS, and now COVID-19. A mix of human activities help these diseases to emerge, including widespread destruction of wild habitat, livestock production practices, the global wildlife trade, and unprecedented international travel and trade. Though we don't yet know the wild source of COVID-19, we do know bats were the original host for SARS, another coronavirus, which then jumped to civets and then to humans. The current pandemic serves as a warning. The international trade in wild animals for meat, pets, traditional medicine, fashion, and other purposes poses grave public health threats. Today, globalization fosters the rapid spread of once localized or emerging diseases. <coughs> Nearly all zoonotic diseases originate in birds or mammals, which may carry 1.6 million different viruses. About 700,000 could present a risk to human health. Researchers have linked increased outbreaks of zoonotic diseases to extensive deforestation in tropical countries, much of it to meet growing global consumer demand for beef, soy, palm oil, and other commodities. With 7.7 billion people on Earth, we're intruding ever deeper into the world's last wild places. This brings forest animals, livestock, humans, and the virus each of them carry into close proximity. Each year, millions of animals are taken from the wild for commercial trade. Many are weak or sickened from traumatic capture and transport to far-off cities or countries, making them prime hosts for viruses. Wildlife markets and captive breeding facilities with many species jammed together in often filthy, cramped cages, act like microbial petri dishes, becoming dangerous breeding grounds for the next pandemic. Oof. Wild animals and livestock can also swap pathogens, which then evolve to infect new vulnerable hosts that lack Yo. natural immunity to them, including humans, with undetected microbes then distributed around the planet. While wild animals are traded by all nations, data shows that China is the planet's largest consumer of wildlife. The U.S. ranks second with far lower volumes and very different products. Unlike other nations, though, China still farms wildlife species in captive breeding facilities. Several pandemics have originated in Asia. Bushmeat, often butchered at markets, is another source of disease transmission. Up to 5 million tons of bushmeat is hunted in the Congo Basin annually, the epicenter of the Ebola virus, first transmitted to humans via infected chimpanzees, gorillas, and forest antelopes. While the wildlife trade is a significant source of disease, it's not the only one. Dangerous livestock practices used by industrial-scale agribusiness brought us avian flu, passed by chickens to people, and Nipah virus, which is passed on by pigs. The COVID-19 pandemic illustrates just how fast an outbreak can There's spread via up. international trade and China. travel. It sparked a global outcry to end the trade and consumption of wildlife for a global crackdown on wildlife trade and an end to wildlife farming in Asia. Experts say that to predict, prevent, and rapidly respond to future outbreaks, we need deeper knowledge of the threats and better disease surveillance by governments. 
Improved planning and enforcement could save countless lives. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that ecosystem health, animal health, and human health are inextricably linked and that protecting nature protects humanity. Without action, we remain vulnerable to newly emerging viral threats. The takeaway message? Protecting wildlife and the planet's wetlands, forests, and grasslands could prevent the next pandemic, which may be just a plane flight away. Just a plane flight away. Um, so... Can I have it back? As a Thank you. Um... Yeah, so uh, I think that's a really good video, uh, just, just to show how much it can and will affect us in the future. Um, there will be more infectious diseases um, that are uh, spread to humans because of the wildlife trade, because of the animal products that we use, um, whether, it's, uh, whether it's, you know, the fur trade or exotic meat or the pet trade um, or whatever. Um, bringing wildlife and humans in such close proximity um, and not having it very regulated is a great way to spread disease and exporting them across countries uh, is a great way to spread disease and it'll continue happening. So it's an important thing to understand. Um, that is where a lot of our pandemics originate from. 75% um, of, of our pandemics um, are, are infectious diseases, are zoonotic in origin, so, so come from those animals and come from that trade. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it's not on there. I don't know how to get to this monitor. Hold on. Okay, we're back. The Roomba's freaking out. Ignore. Um, so. I don't know why there's a transition there. There shouldn't. That was that scared me. I thought my whole slide was gone. Um, okay, so conservation. Um, how how ha have these trades affected chinchillas in the wild? Um, chinchillas have been hunted for fur since the early 1900s. Like I said, uh, they were hunted out of the wild, um, and we lost all of the chinchillas in Peru uh, for that reason. And now they just live in Chile. Um, there are about 5,300 individuals recorded of, of short tail um, chinchillas or long tail chinchillas. I don't remember which one of those was recorded. Um, and only 42 colonies left. Um, so very, very few left in the wild. Protective legislation was placed in 1929 for chinchillas, uh, but was not enforced until 1983. Um, and that led to them being listed as endangered in 2016. Um, so pretty recent um, that, that they were listed as endangered, but the problem started in the early 1900s. So it's kind of a crazy slow, you know, um, improvement for them. Now, uh, hunting of chinchillas is forbidden by the Convention on International Trade of Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Animals. Sorry about that typo, um, which is also known as CITES. So it is illegal to hunt chinchillas out of the wild now. They have protected areas. The pictures that I have here, um, the little, the map above me right here is the location of the Chinchilla National Reserve. Um, so there's a plot of land that is protected uh, where those chinchillas live. And that is a picture on the bottom there of what that... He's in the trash can. He's out of the trash can. Um, <laughs> that is a picture of what the reserve looks like. So that's the chinchilla's national, uh, or natural habitat in the wild. And that's another picture of a wild chinchilla, which, again, looks nothing like our chinchillas, but I think is pretty interesting. Um, nonetheless, why should we care about um, chinchillas being... Is there a reason the ass thing is up right now? Or are you just putting it up so they know? Um, do you like the little, the little guy I put in there? It's a flying chinchilla. Um, why should we care? Like I said, the wildlife trade can and will cause more life-threatening infectious diseases to spread globally. Um, the fur industry continues to engage in unethical husbandry and cruel practices. We talked a lot about the fur trade. I think um, most of you most of you understand why that's a problem at this point. And chinchillas are our friends. Um, they're they've been running around. You can't see them, but they are here. They're in here, and they're friends. Snork and Moomin. He's been jumping on my feet, and he jumped in the trash can, but you missed it. Oh my god. He's trying to get into the aquarium, but you can't see him. Oh, did you see that? He's gone. Anyway. Um, so, 
that's why we should care. And then um, recommendations. I forgot, I like completely forgot until halfway through this presentation that I didn't put polls in this one. Um, I've done polls on every animal quest. It just like slipped my mind. I didn't do them. I'm sorry about that, um, which makes this one a little bit shorter. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but recommendations. Um, avoid exotic furs, jewelry, accessories, tools, trophies, anything with uh, fur in it um, as to reduce the demand for that trade. Um, again, don't buy fur coats. Coats with fur trim. Uh, report suspicious and harmful practices involving wildlife online. Um, I've talked about this one before, but there's lots of sketchy, weird stuff on Instagram and like Twitter and, and stuff like that of people selling exotic pets. And... Uh, um, good things to report not that it does all that much but I report stuff all the time it's worth a shot I guess um, acquire your pets responsibly um, this is a good time by the way guys if you have any questions about this presentation he knocked over the trash can if you have any questions about this presentation um, you can do hashtag ask followed by your question um, I'll do a little Q&A here um, do you think either of them will create for the Q&A because I'll be full cam you want to try oh um so acquire your pets responsibly. Um, I'd be really careful purchasing chinchillas from pet stores. I, I, I wouldn't um, because those pet stores source them from uh, ranches like Molten, like the one that got shut down. Uh, so it's better to know where yours is coming from or rescue a chinchilla if you're really interested in having one as a pet. Uh, keep your pets inside. Interesting point. Um, so there's, like I said, 42 colonies of chinchillas left in the wild. There's a protected area, the Chinchilla National Reserve, where they're protected in the wild. Um, and I read a study of this guy who went out there to survey the land and to study the wild chinchillas um, to try to convince people, or to try to convince the government to expand that protected land for them. And he said that uh, one of the main threats that chinchillas faced in the wild was domestic dogs and cats. Um, he was having to trap uh, people's pets over 2,000 meters from their home um, because they were getting into the protected area and killing chinchillas. Um, and it's just another, another point, really unfortunate because chinchillas are endangered and there aren't very many, um, but w outdoor cats um, and you know stray dogs and stuff like that uh, are a predator that we're releasing into the environment and they kill a lot more than just rats that you want to kill. You know, they, they kill a lot of birds um, and really, really damage wildlife and ecosystems. They're not natural, it's, it's like releasing an invasive apex predator you know, into, into the ecosystem, which sucks. So keep your pets inside. Uh, and then spread awareness about the fur trade um, and, and about everything that you learned today. If you want, you talk to people about it, kind of cool. Uh, and we'll go into a Q&A now. I think that is it. That is it. Um, they have crated the chinchillas. Snork is here. Um, Space is going to pull up the the question, so I can start answering them for you. Someone asked, I won't pull this question up, someone asked how, lo how often they're fed. They're fed every day. Snork and Moomin. Oh, yes. Here they are. Snork's right here. Moomin's right there. All right, you ready? Nice. That's good space. Um, can you visit on the... Yep. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, this is an interesting question. You guys actually might have a better guess to this because I don't actually know what the numbers are. B-Love said, is it true chinchillas can run up to 15 miles an hour and jump as high as 6 feet in the air? Uh, I don't know how fast they can run, but they're pretty fast. Nice catch. Well, Snork's on ground. <laughs> um, Ella said she's never seen him jump up six feet, but he can jump high. Do you guys want to see a video of Moomin jumping? Can I save it yeah, I have it saved. Um, I think I have it saved. Where is he? Where is he? No, that's Connor dancing. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna go to excuse me, Kayla. I gotta get to the thing. Um this is 
Moomin jumping. He wants up on the cabinet. <laughs> so they can jump really high. <laughs> really high. <laughs> he didn't quite do it. <laughs> he runs away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the actual numbers are. It's a good question, though. All right. Um, Gamer Wheel said, how many babies can a female chinchilla have at once? Isn't it like two? Or is it three? It's a really small number. Yeah. I think it's like two or three. But sometimes it's one. Two to four. Between, Alice said between two to four. <coughs> Shut up, Leonard said chinchilla. Oh, no. Shut up, Leonard said chinchilla plushies when? The next plushie release, these are the stompy plushies that we have. Each ambassador is getting one. The next plushie release is Georgie. Um, and then I think it's going to be Winnie and then Siren. Um, and we'll see where the chinchillas fall after that. But they're all designed. Those three are lined up and designed. We're waiting for prototypes right now. Um, do, 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 do. Gandhi said, do chinchillas have any defense, mechanism or defense mechanisms or ways to attack besides biting? Uh, no. They need gloves, so they drop the... Oh, yeah, they... They can, uh, what's it called? First slips? Slip. First slip. First slip. Um, if you grab them and they don't want to be grabbed, they just like drop a ton of fur or they deglove. But that's not a, def I don't know if it's, is that a defense? But yeah, it is, I guess. Um, but they don't like have claws or anything like that. I think that's what you were, you were looking at, <laughs> or looking for. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He's crazy. He's crazy. Um, <laughs> Stevie Wonder said, is there an explanation as to why the wild ones and domestic ones look so different? Um, selective breeding. I think what people wanted to see in, in domestic chinchillas was like big eyes and chunky and really soft and, you know, this gray color or a lot of, there are a lot of white chinchillas in captivity, some pied chinchillas in captivity. Same way we got all the dogs that, you know, look, look all kinds of ways. Um, <laughs> uh, good question. Knight said, who do you report suspicious practices to if you see something? Um, most social media platforms has a report feature. Um, they're all different, but mostly you can report and then um, it gives you options as to what can you be chasing. Um, gives you options as, as to what kind of, uh, kind, of, kind of activity you're seeing. Hello. Ow. <laughs> Bit my nail. <laughs> um. Well. Chinchillas like dust baths. They have to dust bathe because their fur is so dense it doesn't let water pass through. So they need to use dust instead. Um, he said, why so fluffy? 20,000 hairs per square inch on his body. 50 hairs per follicle. Dense. Yeah, and they come from, like, desert-like areas, so it's really dry. Um, so they don't really like humidity, so they roll around in dust uh, to dry off. Please. They don't like humidity? Please. Please. So they roll around in dust to dry off. Oh, no. Never mind. I got it. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you guys know the lifespan of chinchillas and how old these ones are? Snork is young. Snork is like, what, maybe like two? Okay. Three? Two and a half, three? How old's Moomin? Moomin's between three and five years. I think, I'm pretty sure that whole name is 17 years old. What's their lifespan? 17 years? Ella said... The vet said like 17 years, so that's, that's an old one. Um, oh my God, what a great question. Yes, <laughs> Albeus does have a YouTube channel and you can go subscribe to it. There's a video on there um, and we just finished another video yesterday um, and I'm waiting to see the draft for it. So there will be another video going up. It's a tour of the facility that Flip filmed. So go sub, there's more content coming out on there soon. Um, mm -mm. Hello, please, please. Hello, soft. 
Oh well. Oh well. I <laughs> no. Space, can you put my mouse back on the screen? He moved it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, how do you guys tell them apart? Moomin is fat. She said Moomin is fat. Let's see. He has rounder ears, I think. Rounder ears, and Kayla said their faces are different. Their faces are different. Um, they look, they look different. It's hard to explain verbally. Snork has a narrower, snork has a narrower snout. She said, if they were cartoons, Snork would look like the female counterpart of Moomin, if that makes sense. She just looks a little more dainty, a little more feminine, you know. Um, Lacey said, are they spayed, neutered? Yeah, Moomin is neutered. Um, and that's it. Um, 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 um. Uh, so it said, can you teach them, Meat Rod, <laughs> good, good username, said, can you teach them tricks? Uh, yeah, kind of. They know things. Mm -hmm. Um, they know how to crate. Um, they we're teaching them how to spin in the wheel for, or how to run in the wheel for the Halloween event. Because we're going to do, um, a wheel consequence for the loser of the Halloween event. Uh, which is, like, you know how wheels work on stream. Spin, spin the wheel. Um, we're going to do that, except the chinchilla is going to run in there, and then when they jump out, whatever it lands on is, uh, what, uh, is what the person will have to do. Um, they are target trained, so like Oliver is with the little red ball. Um, someone said, do they like to get pet? Uh, Moomin is good under his chin, but they're not like cat, like pet, you know? And Snork doesn't like, doesn't like it at all. Um, my mouse is gone again. Thank you. <coughs> huh? Yeah. Why do you have one? You can answer one. Do you have it? So they have to bathe in this river pine dust because they're from uh, dry desert-like areas um, that don't get a lot of rainfall. So to clean off, they dust bathe, and since they've adapted to bathe in dust. Their fur doesn't let water pass through because it's so thick, um, naturally. Now, if you were to like dunk a chinchilla in water, it would get wet, but that's not good for them because the top would dry faster and then underneath it would stay wet and then they could get sick. So don't try to bathe your chinchillas in water, <laughs> unless it's in dust. water, just, just dust. Just dust. Um, personalities? Um, Moomin's been around people for a lot longer than Snork has, so I feel like he's a little more sociable. Um, Snork has definitely come around, though. Uh, but um, they, if you are thinking about getting a chinchilla as a pet, like Maya said, if you can get them from a shelter or a chinchilla rescue, um, know that they poop a lot and they pee a lot and they chew on everything. everything. They um, they pull paint off the walls, they eat into the wall, they chew cords. Uh, nothing is safe from them. <laughs> there's there's a show called Moomin Valley uh, and I thought Moomin looked like the character Moomin, and I liked theme name, so when we got Snork, I thought we'd just go with Snork. That's another character in the show. Oh, I think the red one. Do they shed? They do shed. Um, we talked about, like, the fur slip earlier. Someone asked what their defense mechanism is. They will, like, drop little tiny tufts of fur when they've been wrestling too hard. 
Um, if I were uh, to like rub my hand along Moomin, fur would definitely come off. Um, just fur that's like already loose. They are not marsupials. That'd be cool, though. That would be really cool. Okay, um, we'll do one more. Do we do it? Do we do it? Um, this one's all answer. <coughs> so, Mr. Wedge said, "Are there fur farms in? Are those fur farms in the video typically?" in the industry or are there more humane operations that are safer to buy from um my answer to this question granted i don't have experience within uh the fur industry but based on the fact that that kind of euthanasia which i think is extremely unethical euthanasia is legal across north america um i just wouldn't purchase fur products you know there are, i'm sure there are operations that do a way better job and there are some operations that do a terrible job uh, but it's not worth it if that's all legal you know because um, there could be people doing a perfectly legal operation that are doing, um, that are engaging in those practices. So that's that's my answer to that question. But yeah, um, that I think will do it for the Q and A. Thank you for asking all your questions. Both the chinchillas have have jumped off the table and they are on the ground, <laughs> but they have done great. Huh? Oh God. She said he was going to knock over a glass jar. Um, this one was like a little bit shorter because I didn't do those pulls like I normally do. I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't know how I just, huh? Yeah. Um, I don't know how I, how I forgot about that. And then also uh, we're done with the research project uh, that, we were, that we were all participating in with the parrots. So um, that's, uh, that's Animal Quest for today. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you like seeing the chinchillas. You don't get to see them a ton on Keeping Streams because... Um, they're always in and they're fast. I don't, he's, I don't know. <laughs> um, time for recess. Yeah, thank you. If you stayed here from the raid, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I hope you liked it. I, I hope it wasn't too, like, a class for you. I, I, I'm working on balancing that, you know. Um, so thank you for staying. If you stayed and you're not normally here, that, that means a lot. I hope you liked it. Um, but hi, Oro. Um yeah, that is it for today. Let me see. Is Connor live space? Window. I don't think he is. Chat? No, he's not. Okay. Who am I hosting? Oh my gosh. Yes. They're good to go back. Um... I can't load channels right now. Who should I host? <laughs> Sorry. One hour stream I thought Nick was bad doing for. Chatter, I would love for you to try to curate an educational presentation about just chinchillas that last four hours. If you can do that, you come back to me and you can have my stream key, okay? Deal. Four hour presentation, four -hour presentation that's also entertaining, she adds. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna host. Should I just host Zoil? Should I host Zoil? All right. I'm gonna read Zoil. Um, did you guys see the Botez stream yesterday on the Botez channel? What'd you think? Good. Pog, so funny. Great. Loved it. Good. Good favorite collab so far it's not it's not because of the people because all the people we've done collabs with are fantastic but i think they keep getting better um i was really happy with it it felt super natural um and balancing that education and it being like a funny stream is good um i, th I think it's going really good so i'm excited um to to get more people for collabs i've been messaging people um, when people come out to Austin, um, I'm, I'm working on grabbing them <laughs> like I did the Botezes and Canute and stuff to, to do collabs here. And that's, um, that's part of what Alveus was founded for. So I'm excited to do more of those. Um, and today is Wednesday. So I will see you tomorrow for a desktop stream, um, slash YouTube video. 
um, is, is tomorrow's stream at the desktop. I want to watch Bruce's documentary on my stream tomorrow. So come hang out tomorrow night if, uh, if you want a cozy, cozy stream. That's the plan. Um, and then after that, I will see you on Saturday for a keeping stream um, before I go to L.A. again for shit camp. Make sure to let the goats out on the next collab. Yeah, you know, for some people that works great, and for some people it doesn't. Um, but yesterday it was fine, I guess. I don't know why they wanted that. But I will see you guys tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. So I was a short one. Um, I had his oil. Goodbye.